Hello guys and welcome. My name is Dr. Peter and today we're going to be discussing your orientation guide in S2. If you're watching this video, it means you're a 500 level. That means you're a more mature clinical student. The good thing about being in S2 is that you're no longer in S1. You're no longer looking your feet for your feet in you know, surgery. You know how things go already in the hospital. Now, to, I'll, I'll just take it straight to the point. S2 is an eight-week surgical rotation. You're going to be doing the specialties in surgery and you're going to be doing here neurosurgery. You're going to be doing plastic surgery. You're going to be doing a lot of orthoped orthopedic surgery. You're going to be doing a little bit of urology and you're going to be doing maxillofacial surgery also in S2. The last rotation you're going to be doing in S2 is cardiothoracic surgery. So typically you're likely going to rotate two weeks in each of these um, um, rotation, in, uh, in these rotations. You, of course, you are going to be doing um, definitely doing neurosurgery, um, CTSU, that's cardiothoracic surgery, you're going to be doing uro urology and some people might have to rotate between orthopedic and you know one of the others but in these six you're going to move around four of them in your eight week, um, within the eight week um, duration. Of course clinical activity will continue. Now the, the lecture load in S2 is not that much. When I counted on the timetable back then it was about 30 something close to 40 so you're going to be likely having you know one or two lectures per day during the eight weeks program it's still surgery so do not drop your guard i want to remind you that your pre-mb to your final mb in 600 level is going to be made up by five of your postings s1 S2, which you are doing now, S3, which you are going to be doing in 600 level, which is a traditional posting, your special postings in surgery, and lastly, your mock, um, your mock in surgery. And that's going to, temp, all this is going to make up about 10% each, and then you're going to bring it down to, you know, your pre mb before you take your exams. A word of caution. Statistically speaking, surgery has the least, you know, pass rate. Not just in this medical school, in most medical schools. And the reason why is not because surgeons are, you know, particularly nasty or, you know, derive joy in making you fail or cry or coming to see you again. No, 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 no. It's because the undergraduate curriculum for surgery is quite large. And people, you, during the exam, you will see the sheer volume of it, especially in 600 level when you're going to be preparing for your MD. So putting the mark step by step by gathering whatever percentage you can get now will be a very very safe model for you so that when you when in, when you are in 600 level you will not be you know grappling for one mark or two marks i mean 49.9 is still not you know that's not what we're aiming for and the point is not why that we're aiming 50 but at least gather all the marks you can now so when the time comes you just you know you, you can you can relax and I need to you need to also be aware that medicine is going to have its own you know border when the time comes. So I just want you to know this while you're going into this posting. Uh, generally the posting is benign. Now, when I mean benign, I mean there's less amount of topics compared to S1, and now you're a more mature student, so the body will not hit you so strongly. Let me go straight to the exam. The exam is going to feature MCQs and essays. The M and that is just all for the S2 exam. However, the MCQs in surgery, you know now that there are no negative marks in surgery. It's going to vary. You likely have a two-hour exam with maybe 100 or 200 multiple choice questions, depending on how the department deems fit. Suffice to say, either ways that there's no negative mark and the time is just enough. There isn't time for you to chew your pen in the exam hall. You, I mean, th those are not the exams you sit and put your back on the on, on the on the you know backrest during the exam hall. Those are the exams that you put you know pen to paper to you, pens up. Meanwhile, the, the theoretical part, the essay part of the exam for surgery, I guarantee you this, the time will not be adequate. The reason why is because they're going to be asking you questions from orthopedic surgery, for example. They're going to be asking you, and we can predict this exam because we've seen, you know, the past question over the years. It doesn't change so much because the surgeons want to pass something across to you. And that is what they are still going to try to do. Um, even in the exam, so you're going to be managing something like a ATLS, a gunshot wound, and uh, and, abdom and things like that, where you're going to use ATLS pro protocol. And writing that in an exam setting, you know that it's much. Even if you know it in your mind, putting it down requires speed. The theoretical part of the exam, the essay, I mean, is going to be about. You'll probably have an hour, and you're going to have maybe eight questions. So you have roughly around six to eight minutes per question. Questions that will require you, you know, to write a full page. I'm talking about the essay part of the exam now let me tell you something important something students especially surgical students miss a lot surgery is not like most other departments in terms of the exams you know it's not like pediatrics or ong the, the, the pattern of the exam is not um same 
as much as, as um, you would say. So if they say, what is the management of the basic um, clinical scenario and it, like outline your management plan. I want you to know that your management in surgery includes you taking part of history again. And when you say, okay, here I'll manage the patients um, as, as like in the following way. This is how I'm going to manage the patient. One, I'll ask for, so you still take part of history. The investigations you are going to, the examinations you are going to perform will also be part of the management. The um, the um, investigations that you are going to request for are still part of your management. And finally, the, treat, the definitive treatments you are going to be given, such as pharmacological, surgical interventions, are also part of the you know management. Communicating the way to answer surgical um, questions is not something to do you know virtually, maybe through this video. It's something you have to sit down with you know a senior or probably tackle one of the surgeons in class when they are teaching you and like so what is what does it mean to manage a patient in an exam situation so that they can tell you the fast way of going through this i'm saying this because i used to be when they say management i'll just um, would, um do um open reduction and internal fixation for a, a, a femoral fracture but, but that is not it. you're supposed to still ask um history or other history of trauma around the body you're supposed to still request for full block count um electrode and creatinine the pcv of the patient and do an x-ray as part of the investigation for the management of that fracture so you see what i'm saying the management plan is quite is a complex in surgery and so this is to still push the point to you that the time in the exam might not be adequate it might not be adequate so i want you to be very very aware of this when you step into that example by and large, if you practice the questions for maybe three or four rotations, I mean, if you practice the, um, the um, questions, the past question from S2 form, there are two ways to go about it. They might pull the whole class and do the exam together at the end of your rotation, or they can um, take the um, exam at the end of each rotation. Either ways, but whatever you do, make sure you practice at least five questions five past questions, five different past questions so that you can know how the department has been thinking in the last five rotations or the last five years so that you have, you know, a comprehensive grasp and then probably, you know, an intuition of how the exams will likely go. Now, that's for the exam. Clinically speaking, now, I mean, you, of course, make your logbook worth it. The best place to get your clacking is in clinic. The clacking that you're going to get on the ward will come with a lot of sweat and toil. The ones you get in clinic is quite easy because the patient is coming straight up. The surgeon is actually interested in what you have to say since you've interacted with the patient. And you might not go into elaborate um, elaborate details because of the clinic setting. And then they can just get you can just get a you know a quick signature. If you clock the patient on the ward, which you still will do, you will, you know, you will defend the point down to you know to the last to the last. And that takes quite uh, and that's quite uh, a task. Either way, I just want to tell you that if you want to quickly get your clackings, aim for the clinic. Of course, you will have to clack the patients you have on your ward because they're, they're going to divide all the patients on your ward to individuals. So that's, I mean, that's going to still rest on you. Now, also, um, of course, you're going to do clinical um, activities, um, clinic, ground round, ward round, and all that. As a medical student, I will advise you strongly. The ratio of your clinical activities and your academic activities as a medical student, you are not a doctor yet. On the world round, they are still going to ask you, you know, 10 courses of acute abdomen. They are still going to ask you things that you need to know from your textbook. Now, it means you have to study. So, now you are in S2. In S1, I would have recommended a 70-30. In S2, maybe a 60-40 between your clinical activities as well and your academic activities. Your academics take precedence because you still have to pass exams. So, read more than you go. Read more than you go. You are not going to be a textbook doctor at the end of the day because in S3, you are going to now shift the part, the um, the proportion to around 50-50, in which case you will get more hands on you. And so, at the end of the day, you are not going to be a textbook doctor. Plus, there's still going to be your internship where you are going to still do countless procedures all those procedures that you are you know just you know struggling for now you're going to do multiple multiple um, um multiple of them you pass catheters until you lose count of the catheters you pass so just be don't forget about your books so i'll, I'll recommend at least two calls a week two calls go to the a and e on the day your unit is on call and then one day volunteer to go by yourself so that you can get to see get to learn from the surgeons when they are doing you know the action in the emergency so that is a structure of how s2 is going to go there is another video on s3 there is a video on um 
there are also videos on pediatrics and ONG. There's also examination videos, clacking videos, OSCE videos that will help you be able to interact with your patients well and at the end of the day, pass very well. So if you like this, share with your classmates, like, subscribe, I don't know if it is a subscribe subscription on this platform, but whatever, just make sure it goes loud if you um, enjoy it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful surgery posting. Cheers!